this. Four more years. Four more years. Four more years. Indeed. Four more years. Four more years. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Have a seat. <laughs> Uh, let me first, uh, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy to be here with everyone. And I want to start by thanking Deepak and Neil for the work that you all have been doing with Impact over these many years. I was very proud to be a part of the first meetings when um, Impact was born. And when I think about those earliest conversations, Deepak, and what has now occurred in terms of the number of people that not only are in the room, but the number of people who have been so directly impacted by the work that you and the organization have been doing. It really is extraordinary when we think about the number of people who have been mentored, those who have been inspired to run for office, those who have run for office, those who are in elected office. When I think about the work that has happened because of impact, where there's been about voter education, mobilization, um, what that has meant in terms of turning a state like the state of Georgia, where now in the United States Senate, there is representing the state of Georgia, an African American and a Jewish American. <laughs> in large part because of Indian Americans and Asian Americans doing the work that was done in the state of Georgia to ensure that people saw a sense of connection between themselves and the outcome of that election. It really is extraordinary. So I wanted to stop by to, one, thank, of course, the organization for everything and for all that it represents, but also to say, especially to those who have run for office, or aspire to run for office, that you must run. And you must know that you are not alone. There is so much that we still have to do as a country. And a lot of the work that we each do, which is why we are here together, is born out of a belief in the promise of America. And dare I say that I am empirical evidence of the promise of America. As many of you know, my mother arrived in the United States at the age of 19 by herself. Traveling from India before, this was in the late 1950s, before a transcontinental flight was anything in the norm, and my grandfather, who was one of my most favorite people in the world. In fact, we were pen pals forever. We did for, so this is gonna be maybe generationally. Does anybody remember those, those um, the stationery, the blue stationery with the stripes, right? <laughs> and we would send letters back and forth when we didn't go, when I didn't see him. And my grandfather, um, when my mother secretly, as it turns out, applied to UC Berkeley because she wanted to study science, go Bears. My grandfather said to his eldest child, who was also a daughter, you go. And my mother then arrived in the United States. And being who she was, you know, all of five feet tall, she said she was 5'1". If you ever met her, you would have thought she was 10 feet tall. But being who she was and coming from where she did and coming from a place where she was taught the importance of, of democracy. She was taught the importance of independence. She was taught the importance of fighting against corruption. She was taught the importance of being involved and being engaged. She was taught the importance of, of what governments can do both for the benefit of the people but in a way that could hurt the people if everyone doesn't participate. All of that because of what she understood as an Indian woman, the daughter of an independence movement, and what it means to be involved. My mother, then immediately when she arrived in Berkeley, California, in the Bay Area, in her sari went to go march for civil rights. Right? In her sari. Many of you have heard the story. We would go back every two years pretty much to India, usually sometime between October and December to you know, avoid monsoon season. And, and that's when we had our, our Christmas break. And um, 
I, as the eldest grandchild, had the honor and distinction within our family of being the only one my grandfather would take with him on his morning walks after he was retired with his retired buddies. You know, you know, the old Indian men, you know, just taking their walks in the morning. Right? <laughs> we all know it, our grandfathers, right? And so every morning, he and his buddies would take a walk, and, he, and I was the only one in the family that he would allow to come on the walk. And I remember as a young girl hearing them debate the importance of democracy, hearing them discuss the importance of standing for what is right and fairness, for equality, for freedom. And so all of that brings me to why I know from, the, from my heritage and from the earliest days of my life when I was aware of such topics as democracy, why this organization is so important and why the people who are here are so important to all that we know to be the promise of America. This election coming up in six months, I think is presenting a question to each of us, which is what kind of world do we want to live in and what kind of country do we want to live in? And one of the ways that we answer that question is to seek office and to participate in elections knowing that the outcome of those elections matter in fundamental ways. Elections matter. And so I will offer then, I will then offer just a bit of advice for those who are thinking about running for office. Can I see a show of hands? Who's thinking about running for office? Who's in the process of running for office? Who wants to run for office one day? OK, so there are a number of people. <laughs> OK, <laughs> look at that. You know, the, over the years, we've had so much more participation by Indian Americans in the electoral process running for office. <laughs> But the numbers are still not reflective of the size of the growing population. And therefore, what will happen invariably, it's happened to all of us, is you are going to find yourself invariably in rooms where you are the only one who looks like you, the only one who has had your life experience. And what I then say to you each, look around this room and hold on to this image and remember then, when you walk into those rooms, when you walk into those situations, you remember you are not alone. We are all there with you. You must remember that. And remember then, the responsibility that you carry, dare I say the duty. Many of us were raised with a sense of duty. The duty that you then have to speak with the voice that is the voice of the people who are so proud of you that you are in that room and expect that you will use the full force of your voice to express what you know to be right, to express what you know must change. It is so important. When we think about the decisions that get made in those rooms, the best decisions are made when all of the viewpoints and all perspectives can contribute to the outcome. And that's why it's so important that everyone is here, both if you are running for office, but also in the work that you and we are each doing in terms of reminding community, family, friends of their importance and their power, and their power. And the last point I'll make is this. There's a duality to the nature of democracy. On the one hand, it's incredibly strong. There's an incredible strength about democracy when it is intact. What it does for its people, the protection of individual rights and liberty, much less dignity, very strong. On the other hand, very fragile. It is only as strong as our willingness to fight for it. And if anyone is associated with impact, we know we're prepared to fight. We like a good fight, and when we fight, we win. Thank you all. <laughs>